Sponsoring today's video, we have VIP GVG Mall, an official platform selling games for several PC launchers, consoles and of course Microsoft serial keys like The Office 2019 or the most common Windows 10 Pro, where you can use my SKG discount code and enjoy 20% off, making it only $14. After getting the key, you'll have the key in your profile and all you need to do is go to your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, Ashen Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. And good morning, of course, of course, <laughs> and good morning, of course. Now, uh, today I'm going to do a, a brief video where I talk about a bit, um, where I talk a bit about them morning. Uh, the Intel, the new Intel Alder Lake CPUs that are coming, or at least they are doing their premiere on 4th, November the 4th, okay? Um, and they are very interesting in some cases, but in some aspects, but really, really a letdown in others. So, if you don't know what Intel Alder Lake is or what it brings per se, basically, um, we have now different things. So. Instead of the traditional cores like we have on AMD, we have now a different approach, more like smartphones. We have big little cores architecture. Basically, basically, <laughs> basically we have power cores, which are the P cores, so the, the powerful cores, and we have the E cores, which I assume it's something like economic cores. They are smaller, they consume less power, and they can fit more E cores um, than the power cores. So because they're smaller. They are also slower, but they can put more E-Cores. Imagine that one E-Core, uh, one power core is equal to, let's say, three E-Cores, but let's say they can fit four E-Cores instead of one power core. So they are already gaining multi-threading performance due to that, okay? But well, that's a different approach that Intel is taking and so on, and I praise them for that, for trying different things. That's what innovation is about trying different things, sometimes you fail, sometimes you, you succeed, that's what it is all about, okay? But now uh, it is still, uh, it uses DDR, DDR5 of course, so it's a completely, a completely new platform, it uses DDR5, a new architecture, and this, it is on the Intel's, um, Intel's 7 process, which although it is Intel's 7 process, it is 10 nanometers. Intel just call it Intel's 7 process uh, to be to look like it is more on par with the TSMC process, okay? And it is not that it isn't on par because in terms of density it is more or less like it. Um, but it's just a nomenclature because it isn't really 7 nanometers and they want to make it like, uh, to make it seem like it is, at least in terms of marketing, okay? Uh, but well, Let's start from this. So we have a leak from Tech Power Up. It's the leak. It's not from Tech Power Up, but it's on their website. And we have uh, 48, 88 megahertz, so basically 4.9 gigahertz, 100% usage. It's a 12900K, I assume, and it is consuming 233 watts. I repeat, 200. And 33 watts. This is insane. We're, it's like we're back to FX era, where we actually had like 200 plus or 300 watts for a CPU. That's crazy. And we were on 32 nanometers. We're now on 10 nanometers for Intel and 7 and 5 nanometers for the TSMC products, okay? Uh, so it's pretty insane, 92 degrees and 233, uh, 30, yeah, 233 watts, okay? So, yeah, it's kind of insane because, okay, it's a static overclock and static overclock is basically that, like Raichu says, and he's right, because st a static overclock is that from like Ryzen 3000 series and Intel 11th generation or even the 10th generation, it is that. It is just completely useless for the 5000 series CPUs on Ryzen, for example. You can use the, um, the Curve Optimizer, it will be way easier than the, um, than the static overclock in terms of testing and so on. It will be way easier to do overall, um, it will perform equal or better. 
and the same applies to the Intel CPUs, you just let them boost, maybe adjust the voltage a bit if you want to undervolt, like we do with the, Q the Curve Optimizer, and that's it. And the E cores were weren't at 5.2, so only the power cores were, while the E cores were at 3.7, and still, that CPU was, was pushing 330 watts. That's, that's incredible, so... It seems like the 3.7 is the max for the E cores, um, while the P cores can go way higher. But still, um, even at this this voltage, only 1.27 five for 10 for 10 nanometers, it's too much. 232 watts, it's too much. And I think that 130 1.38, sorry, or 1.44 volts, both will degrade the CPU sooner or later. So. I don't know why these testings, it's, it's just nonsense. Nobody will use this, the, uh, um, a voltage as high as this one, and the boosts won't use such high voltages, okay? Also, the E cores don't have hyper-threading, okay? So, basically, only the P cores have hyper-threading. Uh, I don't know if I said it before, but we have P cores and E cores, that I know I said, but only the P cores, so only the power cores actually have hyper-threading. So, it happens that, in this case, the 10-core CPU will be something like 6 P-cores and 4 E-cores. So, 6 power cores, 4 economic cores. And in this case, it will be a, a strange thing, it will be like 10 cores and 16 threads, because the E-cores do not have hyper-threading, okay? So, yeah, it's strange. 10 cores, 16 threads, but it is what it is. Now we see that in the terms of the CPU-Z benchmark, the results for the i5-12600K beat the i9-11900K and nearly doubles the 5600X's multi-threaded score. Well, of course it doubles, I mean, it has 16 threads versus the 12 threads and has actually uh, 10 cores, even if it is with, with 4 E cores, it has 10 cores in comparison to the 6 core, so they're comparing 612 versus 1016. And with the DDR5, with higher um, with a higher amount of of IPC, so it's normal that in terms of synthetic benchmarks, it nearly doubles. So I don't know why they are so surprised. I mean, this is what innovation is about, basically bringing more performance but at least they should maintain the power envelope, which they don't. I, I still don't understand, for example, the 5600X uh, will consume like 80 watts, 90 watts maybe, uh, and this one is like pushing 200 watts. It makes no sense. Still, in terms of performance, it is there. Good to go Intel, but yeah. Power draw, the power envelope affects me a bit, okay? So basically, in here, the 12900K, all P cores 5.2, manages to minuscule multi-core lead over the stock Ryzen 9 5950X. Yes, but 330 watts. Yeah, we have it here, for example. So way, it seems like way higher performance in terms of single core, at least on CPU-Z, so 851 versus the 648 and it's it is still over over it yeah by a bit by 80 points more or less 80 81 points in terms of multi-threading um so yeah basically we have the 12900k which is i suppose it's like 16 cores maybe 16 cores 24 threads but since the the single core performance is way higher the the multi-threading ability with DDR5 and so on, it, it is also higher, by a bit. Very, very interesting. Let's see more results on Cinebench. Cinebench. Yeah, the, the single thread ability is really, really great. I'm impressed. So, well, basically that's it. We have performance, but we also have uh, an astronomic power draw. Let me know what you think in the comment section because I really, really want to think. I really want to to know what you think about it because it's it's just insane. So I still think 
that uh, the only the only good to have things about this generation will be the mid-tier CPUs. The mid-tier CPUs like the 12600K, maybe if they fit the power envelope with uh, with uh, boost, the boost clocks instead of the old core overclocking, and the the 12 the 12400F. I still think that the 12400F will be the best all-rounder CPU, and all the other CPUs above will not be worth it at all. Once again, thanks a lot for watching. Sorry for the boring video because, well, it's morning, I'm still dying. <laughs> but well, um, yeah, basically that's it. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share this video, leave your comment in the comment section because I want to know what you think about it. I, I really want to know. See you in the next video, possibly a testing one or a new type of video that you may actually enjoy. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.